Hey everyone, it's Colin. How's it going? It's kind of a gray, gloomy day outside, perfect for sitting indoors and listening to music. And along those lines, we've got a new speaker to kind of quickly check out here. It's called Symphonisk, and it's from IKEA. It's actually the company's second series of speakers that they've released in about the last year or so. The first was called Enneby, and I did a review on that if you want to go check that out. The styling on this thing, pretty simple. Looks like a fairly traditional bookshelf speaker. It comes in black or white. Behind the grill is a one inch soft dome tweeter and about a three inch woofer, along with a front firing bass reflex port and some pretty simple controls along the bottom. Just play pause, volume up and volume down. Other than that, it does have a couple of interesting mounting options. Of course, you can set it on a shelf, either vertically or horizontally. There are little rubber feet for that. But IKEA will sell you a mounting bracket where you can mount it to the wall, vertically or horizontally. And if you mount it horizontally, IKEA says it's even strong enough to be used as a bookshelf itself. A little ironic there. Plus, there's another very interesting option where you can mount this speaker to like a rail on the wall, like what you would use to hang utensils off of in the kitchen. Not sure how many people are actually going to do that, but it is kind of nice to see that they're thinking more in terms of this potentially being used anywhere in your home and not just sitting on a shelf. Part of that speaks to what's this speaker's purpose. This actually isn't a Bluetooth speaker. It's not meant to be portable. In fact, it only works off of AC power. But what it is really good at is providing whole house audio. And that's because it's part of the Sonos family of products. So instead of feeding audio to this through Bluetooth, you feed audio to it over Wi-Fi. Now, if Wi-Fi kind of sucks in the area you want to put this speaker, there is an Ethernet port on the back so you can plug it in with a hardwired connection and IKEA even includes an Ethernet cable in the box, which is a bit of a nice touch. Setting it up is actually pretty easy. You do need to use the Sonos app to do so, but it's fairly straightforward and it includes a couple of really cool features. One of which is to kind of auto tune the sound of the speaker to the room. Basically, you get to a step where it starts playing sound out of the speaker and you walk around the room and wave your phone and the app picks up the sound through the phone's microphone and can kind of tune the EQ to adjust for the acoustics of the space. This is something that Sonos is starting to do with some of its other products as well. And it's nice to see that it filtered down into this admittedly lower cost part of its product lineup. Other than that, it does behave like any other product within the Sonos ecosystem. You can of course buy two and use them in a stereo pair. They can also be set up as rear surround speakers if you pick up on a Sonos sound bar, so home theater. And that's actually potentially going to be a really popular use for this series of speakers. And you can also, of course, use them on their own as a single unit. Place one in the kitchen or in the garage or on the back patio, something like that. Now, that gets to kind of the whole flexibility and use case for this particular series. I think if you just need to get one speaker, if you're just interested in a single unit, this may not be the right one for you. And a lot of that comes down to flexibility. You need to feed audio to these through the Sonos app. Now, if you are an iOS or Mac user, you can also use AirPlay 2. But if you use Windows or Android, Sonos is pretty much the only way that you can do it, which is a bit of a bummer. The other thing is that, of course, now you're, you know, signing into another ecosystem. You need to use the Sonos app. You need to create an account to set this thing up. So if you're not already a member of that ecosystem or have desires to expand further into it, do you really need another account? Do you really want to lock yourself into using a specific app to manage one particular speaker when the rest of the speakers in your home may be connected to in different ways? That's kind of up to you. Now, the sound quality, probably the most important aspect to this whole thing. And I'm gonna say it sounds good. It doesn't necessarily sound amazing though. The high end is actually pretty detailed and crisp. I'm happy to see that this was a two-way design instead of them trying to make one single full range speaker do everything. But this speaker does suffer from a very common problem that I think a lot of other speakers of its size tend to suffer from, and that is 
It's trying to do too much with too little. It's only about a three inch woofer, but they've got the EQ and DSP in this speaker tuned to try and get as much bass as they can out of that little driver. And so that ends up in a scenario where bass guitars are very kind of boomy and very present, but anything lower than those like kick drums falls off very quickly. This speaker has lots of bass, but it doesn't have a lot of impact to that bass. What I've also noticed is that the high end can be a little bit sibilant at times, particularly on female vocals, but I wouldn't necessarily call it harsh. Would I consider this like the centerpiece in an audiophile setup? Absolutely not. I think your money would be better spent elsewhere if you're looking for a really good, just focused listening environment kind of setup. But for other places in your home, just for kind of fill sound, like I said, the kitchen, the garage, the patio, anywhere else where it's more casual listening, I think the sound quality is actually quite decent for that. It's also worth noting that there's a second model in the Symphonisk lineup that looks like a lamp, and that's because it is. Actually, when I first saw it, I thought it looked like an Apple HomePod sitting on a dinner plate with this weird bulb fitting sitting on top. When I went to the store to pick up this one, IKEA actually had kind of a mock living room setup with a pair of those lamp speakers. And what I was surprised by is that the audio quality is actually a little bit different between the two models. That particular model offered more bass. It was a bit richer. It seemed like it played a little bit lower. It still suffered from a lack of impact, but not quite as badly. But I also noticed that those speakers tended to be a little bit harsher in the high end, especially on female vocals. Now, it also begs the question like, how often would you really want to have a speaker and a lamp together? Like, where would you put those in your house? The way IKEA had that demo set up was kind of weird, you know, a stereo pair on either side of a TV. And I wish I could play you back some audio from that setup because they did have a few tracks you could pick from. Unfortunately, they were all copyrighted. They didn't set it up so that you could play your own music through that demo setup. but. You know, I'm not so sure how popular that lamp speaker is gonna go for, especially considering its price. So that gets us to the value prospect for this thing. This bookshelf speaker model goes for $100 US. And at that price, I think it's a decent value. Is it the most amazing sound you can get? No, but it's the cheapest way to get into the Sonos ecosystem. So as I mentioned a little bit ago with the whole home theater setup, I think this particular model is going to prove quite popular as rear surround speakers for people who want to just kind of fill that out alongside their Sonos soundbar. The lamp speaker goes for $180, and I'm not sure why it's so much more expensive than this model, considering all it does is add really just kind of a lamp. So that model, it does sound a little bit better in some ways, I think but I just think its utility, its use case is not quite as good as this one. The bookshelf model is so much more unobtrusive. It's very slim. It fits in with Ikea's other furniture very well. It's very flexible in where you can place it. And the price I think is just right. So if you're interested in getting into the Sonos ecosystem or you've already got a few products and you want to expand, this is a decent way to add on or get into it, but if you just want a single speaker, if you just want something that's portable, especially that could potentially be battery powered, yeah, I don't think this is it. In fact, I think that Enneby model is going to be the best bang for the buck right now. Anyway, if you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at thisdoesnotcomp. 
And as always, thanks for watching.